Alrighty, hello YouTube and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial I'm not going to be doing an overview, but what I am going to be doing is showing you how to do a very, very beautiful uh, bubble effect. So here's what we're going to do. First, you're going to change your foreground color to this shade of blue. It can be really any shade of blue really, but if you want to make it lighter, your bubbles aren't going to turn out quite right. So I'm going to make it kind of a darker shade of blue and call it good. Then I'm going to, oh and by the way, this area that I created, the original area, is 10 inches by 10 inches. Does it have to be that? No, it really doesn't, but that's what I want to work with today. So here's what I'm going to do. Set the foreground color, <clears throat> go to your paint bucket tool, and splash that paint all over your canvas. Then, you're gonna go to your elliptical marquee tool, and you're going to shift click. Now by shift clicking, it creates a perfect circle. Make sure you don't let off of shift before letting off your mouse. Unclick the mouse first. Then you can move that quote unquote bubble to wherever you need it. I'm gonna put it right there. Now this part gets tricky. And this is where I made the most mistakes when I was learning this effect. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice, my throat's a little hoarse. Uh, anyways, what you can do is go to your elliptical mark, or not your elliptical marquee tool, I apologize. Go to your dodge tool and click it. I set my range, my range to whatever color fits. It really depends on the color you use. So I'll just do some troubleshooting to figure out what works. Make sure this protect tones boxes is not clicked. If it's selected, your bubble will not turn out right and it'll just look trashy. That's no good. So click that. The size, I like the size 56. I tend to use this kind of blurred out icon of it. And I don't really know how big this looks on my recording software, it tends to blow up my mouse a little bit. So if you can't see these numbers, I'm at size 56 with the exposure of 55%. I'm going to lower my exposure a little bit down to about uh, 38, 39%. You, you want to be in the 40 range. You want to be somewhere close to 40. Um, so the protect tones is unselected. And here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to trace the outer lines of my bubble until I get my desired edge. Now remember, bubbles may be spheres, but water bubbles are not perfect. You don't need to be too crazy about this outer edge. You can be, if you really want to be, but I'm not. Why? Because I don't care enough to be. So you have this. Then you're just going to go to this area right here and you are going to click like a madman until it looks good. What you're trying to do is creating a highlight spot, a place where light could be hitting it just right. You want to try to follow the natural contours of the bubble first. That's the most important part. Like I said, you want this to look like a bubble, not an eyeball. Well, I didn't say that, but you want it, it's a bubble, not an eyeball. So you have that, we'll kind of bow it outwards like that, and then there we go. Then you're gonna press Control D, deselect it, and boom, you have this beautiful looking bubble right here. Now, why did I create such a big canvas for such a small, small thing? Because with this canvas, you can make various bubbles all over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lighten up this edge here. I'm creating a light source for my bubbles. Now you notice I clicked a lot in that corner. Well, that's because as the light goes out, it actually gets darker. This is important to remember. And the similar thing with this is if you want to leave some dark spots, you actually have the option of doing that because this is water. It's a different type of medium for light to travel through. In fact, I'm going to turn my exposure up just a little bit for this. 
By the unprotect by not protecting the tones, you're able to create these kind of like hyper exposed bright spots. Which adds a pretty interesting lighting effect on it. I'm gonna turn my exposure back down so I can create some of the blurring of the light as it goes out. Now you see how there's that hard edge there? You don't want that. So by lowering your exposure, you're kind of able to blur that out a little bit. Now just remember, when you're sweeping this to lighten the exposure of the edges, you don't want something too ridiculous. You don't want some weird globby shape and you don't want super defined borders. Also make sure you take care of these corners. So now you have a very interesting bubble effect. Now, uh, I guess I'm just gonna spend the rest of the video making these bubbles and yeah, we'll just see how it goes from there. And there you have it. You have some beautiful looking bubbles. Um, this can be used, I'm gonna touch that up a little bit. That looks pretty bad, there we go. This can be used for a variety of applications. You can do this to make a cool ocean effect. Hey, if you wanna make lava bubbles, that's cool. This trick will also work if you wanna make misshapen bubbles. Now uh, you could just make a, like a globby shape and just trace that however the light would be refracted through it or whatever. You can do this with different colors. In fact, let's change the color a little bit. Uh, that didn't work. <laughs> whatever. Here, actually, gotta turn that into a layer. We'll turn that into a layer. Change the color. Uh, that still doesn't work. Dang it. Let's change exposure. Make it like that. You can offset it. Do some gamma correction. Make it look kind of cool. Whoa, that's not what I was going for. Do that. Make it look kind of interesting. Not really my taste, but hey, whatever floats your boat, right? And there are various other things you can do. Let's just play with the hue and the saturation. that and of course this has a variety of uses like I said before um, another thing this is kind of good for is just it's just a fun thing to do if you want to make a logo that has to do with bubbles it's an easy way to do it whatever but that's pretty much all I got so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and I'll be posting another tutorial video very soon thank you Thank you.